everyone, um, welcome to another instalment of Loki's Lair Presents. Uh, this one is a continuation of my absolute basics of painting tutorials. Um, this one is on, well this one's on painting, I suppose. Painting miniatures. The things you need to know, um, for those who know nothing. So, well let's get stuck in. There's a whole heap of information out there on the web. Um, you will have known. I'm sure you've YouTubed it, Googled it, had a look at it, um, spoken to different people. Everyone you speak to will probably tell you um, different things. Uh, you will hear many things that are taken as gospel, such as buy the most expensive brush you can afford, don't use tap water to mix your paints, all this sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to buck the trend here. I used, uh, I, I do, I must admit, I do use bottled water um, to mix my paints now because I'm in a very hard water area and there's a lot of limestone in my water um, which does tend to affect my painting but if you don't have that problem then tap water's pretty fine. Um, I use bottled water because I'm inherently lazy and I just cannot be bothered boiling the kettle again and again and again and again. But I do, um, I do, when I run out of bottled water, I do use boiled water from the tap, um, which gets rid of uh, a lot of the impurities in it, and you can certainly do that. So what do you need to begin painting? Well, you don't need much, really. You need some brushes, some water, and I suppose a miniature, and some paint. Now, you do not have to buy every paint under the sun. Um, oh, and you also need some fuel. This is my guilty pleasure. Don't drink too much caffeine when you're painting or you'll get jittery hands. So, you also need some fuel. One second. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay, moving on. You do not need to buy every paint under the sun. You can get by with a very, very basic colour range. As a rough rule of thumb, um, learning something about colour theory can go a long, long way to helping you become a better painter, but it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Suffice to say that um, you can mix most colours, except for black and white, which technically Anna color um, from the three primary colors which are red blue where are we and yellow these are your three primary colors from these three colors all other colors are mixed except for black and white now you can mix a, a massive variety of, of different colours and different shades and tones of different colours simply by adding black or white to a colour in this case red say to give you a lighter or a darker shade of that colour it's not quite that simple though so if you are just going to buy a limited number of colours to begin with, because because paints can be expensive, these little suckers run to about six bucks a bottle. So if you're on a limited budget and you want to buy a limited amount of colours and mix your own, then I would strongly recommend that you buy the lightest shade of the colours, um, the lightest shade of the colours that you can get, because it is much easier. It is much easier to make a darker variant of the colour than it is to make a good lighter variant. Because if you add, say, blue and white, you do end up with a you do end up with a lighter blue, but it will look very chalky. It will look washed out and pale rather than vibrant and beautiful as you get it when it's mixed, you know, by a professional paint company with these pigments. So but it is much easier to make this fella a lot darker um, and it loses none of its vibrancy so buy the lightest colors you can otherwise a basic range 
the bog standard colors you know um, red yellow green blue black um, brown and some metallics um, are really all that you need um, the more that you paint you will find the more well the more that you buy really um, um, and and painting collecting paint turns into a bit of a hobby for most of us painters until you have shelves and shelves full of them 95% of which you will never use more than once a year and you will instead find that you have your old faithfuls that you continue to go back to I'm just going to move the camera around now to show you these are mine these are my old faithfuls here so these are the ones that I use all the time and they live on my desk okay I have many 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 more than that but I really don't use them and they live in a box um, on my bookcase so that's paint um, types of paint look I'm not a fanboy of, of any particular paint style I do like the dropper bottles as you can see all my paints there are dropper bottles but they are not necessarily from say Vallejo or the Army Painter which, which do dropper bottles I actually buy dropper bottles off eBay which I know you know I love and I put my own mixes in them because these things that last forever they do not dry out like a lot of the paint pots can so for example this was a citadel something or other um, this this is a uh, this is one, one, this is the exception to the rule where I've actually gone backwards. This was Strong Tone Army Painter, which came in a dropper bottle. But I was uh, base coating, I was actually inking up um, a 15mm army, and so it was just it was just so much easier to put it in one of these so I can go back to it again and again and again. And I've used pretty much the whole bottle over the space of a couple of days. So I'm not worried about it drying out. Now, water people will tell you not to use tap water honestly I use tap water for years you can use any type of water you like if you are you know going for golden demon clot style um, you know level of painting um, you know then by all means buy distilled water but otherwise look I tend to use bottled water um, simply because I'm in a hard water area which means that my water has a lot of limestone in it so I tend to use bottled water but it's not necessary you can just boil your water if you're a bit worried about it if you can't afford to be buying heaps and heaps of bottled water because you do go through it believe me um, I will go through oh, a pack of 24 in a week so you need some water you need some paint brushes. Now, paint brushes. Where to begin? The longer you paint, the more brushes you'll collect. I have crappy brushes, Bunnings brushes, uh, dollar brushes from the um, Cost Plus, the dollar store, the two dollar shops. I have sables that cost me 15 bucks I have others that cost me five or six and a, this one I think is a prolon this is a synthetic brush now you will often hear people say buy sables buy the most expensive brushes you can afford I say buy a whole bunch of different brushes try out a whole bunch of different brushes and um, it, you will often be amazed at what works for you. I love these fellas. These guys are called Mini Majestic, Royal and Langnickel. They are a synthetic, non-sable brush and they are my absolute favourite brushes of all time. They just work for me. This of course means absolutely nothing because you may try them and you may absolutely hate them you just don't know um, you, you do not know which brushes are going to work best for you 
until you try some out. So I would say buy some decent synthetic brushes. These ones, um, these ones I really like as well uh, for non-detailed work, so for like base coating. And this is actually a, I was really surprised, these are actually um, Italeri uh, model brushes and it doesn't say, they don't appear to be sable. I think they may be synthetics. But they've got a really, really lovely, I mean, it's very hard to tell there. I'm just going to put that in. It's very hard to tell. But they have, come on now, come on now, focus. They have an awesome point. There we go. They go to an awesome point. They've got a great spring in them. Um... And I found them to be excellent base coating brushes. So you really, really never know. Um, and I also really like these ones are West Art and they're a Prolon brush. They also have a really, they come to a really fine point. Um, they keep their shape very well um, and I really like painting with them. So I use sables, I use non-sables, and I use pretty much everything in between. You won't know what you like until you try some. But my advice is don't go out and spend $30 on a sable, you know, on, on three sable, or, you know, two sable brushes, one, depending on how big it is, um, when you first start out painting. It's just going to be a waste of money. You'll just buy a few different types um, a few different types of synthetic brushes you know and the cheaper sables if you like or buy one really good sable in about size I'd say size 0 or size 1 um, most of the brushes come with sizes so like and you'll need a selection you'll need a, a, a various selection of sizes so for my my royals here um, these are the ones that I use most often for my more detailed work. Um, and to give you an idea, I have two zeros, um, a three zero, which is very small, a ten zero, which is also very small, and a thirty zero, which is absolutely tiny. This holds almost no paint, dries out pretty much instantly but when you are dotting an eyeball in this is the go-to guy absolutely go-to guy he it is just fantastic okay when I am painting large areas um, and base painting large areas or even doing you know like the monsters so for example this guy my um, ice golem from the Malifaux children of December range was painted mainly using this dude who is um, a wargaming monster brush from Army Painters. Um, I bought this, I went down to my local hobby store and I got it from there. Now I have to admit I do not normally buy brushes from the hobby stores but I quite I wanted to buy a brush from the Army Painter range because I quite like this triangular um, this triangular tip here it's it's and it's a very very nice brush I bought a couple more of these and they were very reasonable um, because they're on special for half price but as a rough rule of thumb you can get much better brushes for a half to a third of the cost in your local art store than you can through the gaming stores if you stick hobby in front of its name you can double its price on to wet palettes a palette. This is a palette. This is a palette. And this is a palette. So, what is the difference, I hear you say? And why does it matter? Very good questions. Very good questions indeed. This is my mixing palette where I um, make sure that my paint is the right consistency and is the correct colour. This is just an old tile. It's an old tile um, that I picked up at a, one of my local salvage stores here in Perth. I got three of these, two square ones, about you know half a foot by half a foot, uh, for a grand total of two dollars. 
This is a cheap mixing palette, plastic, from cost plus like the, the a dollar store, a buck shop. Okay, it costs a dollar. Excellent. Um, at the end of the day, you just soak this in hot water until all this comes off because the acrylics tend to um, go quite plasticky. Um, and I use this for mixing up large quantities, so as you can see, there's a bit in there. That's not hobby paint. It's um, it's a cheap acrylic for some of my terrain. Now, this is my wet palette. What is a wet palette? It is basically a box with a sponge and some baking paper in it. Not greaseproof paper, but baking paper. Also known as parchment paper in the United States. Okay, now you can buy these from a hobby store for, you know, 30 bucks and you can buy the parchment paper uh, or the, the wet palette paper as they will call it for another 12 bucks. Or you can go to your local supermarket, you can buy baking paper for like $3, the sponges, pack of three for $3 and a box. Um, if you're lucky, like me, you have a bunch of boxes lying around your house. Um, if not, you can go buy a box for two dollars. So for six dollars, you can have enough wet palette paper for you know six years, um, along with enough sponges to keep you going strong. The beauty of the wet palette is when you add your paint to it, that's going to stay wet. It is not going to dry out. Um, the Baking paper allows, if you run, if I run my fingers over the paper here, it's it's moist. It's very slightly moist. It just keeps the paint from drying out into a little hard plastic, plastic blob. And so you can come back to that time and time again, weeks later. Close that up, keep it shut. It stays nice and fresh. Do you need one? No, probably not. If you are just starting out, I think it's far more important to um, simply know that you don't need, miniatures don't take a lot of paint. They take a tiny amount of paint. So when you are painting, tiny dob. That's it. Tiny dob. Okay. You will often, but you do not use the paint straight from the bottle. You add a drop of water to it. I use one drop of water per one drop of paint. That tiny bit of paint. With one drop of water. Makes an awful lot of paint. Okay. This is the consistency of about the semi-skimmed high-low milk. When you paint a figure with it, when you're first starting out, the tendency is to use the paint straight from the bottle, but you don't want to do that. Because on these on, on these types of figures, on these types of figures, um, you know you've you've got an awful lot of detail. So when you paint them, if you use the paint straight from the bottle, it's going to gum up all this detail. Okay, so if you use a watered down paint, when you paint your figure, when you add the paint to your figure, I don't know if you can just, right, use a little bit of paint, just put it on there. Okay, there you go, right, you can still see the wipe through that, it is, the paint is not covering the figure, it does not cover the figure in one go, depending on the type of paint you use, depending on the type of paint you use, you may have to go over this figure four, five, six times. What? I hear you thinking. Oh my god, why? Why can't I just why can't I just whack that on? 
you know, why do I have to? Why do I have to paint it six times instead of one time? I'll show you. Okay, see, and for each layer that you put on, it gets a little bit darker. Okay. That's a little bit darker. And a bit more. And a little bit darker still. Okay, a little bit of pigment goes on each and every time. Um, and what that means is, pretty much, you don't, you're not covering, you're not covering the detail. So, I'm probably going to strip this afterwards anyway. So, what I'll do, because he's certainly not having a purple coat. Um, well, turquoise, technically. Now, this is, this paint that I'm going to add now is straight from the bottle. So, if I add paint straight from the bottle, it certainly covers it. Straight away, even. But it will gum up the detail. You see how that his shoulder pad there? It's just a blob now. There's no you can't tell that there's well anything really. It's it's just a blob. And that's what everything's gonna look like. The buttons, the things on his pants. You know, his hands will just be blobs. It, it fills in all the crevices. Um, and that's, that's really not something, that's really not something that you want. So you have to thin your paint down. And you have to paint several times until you get a decent coverage. Some paints cover much, much, much better than other paints. Okay, so for stuff like these browns, um, this guy here, part of my Malifaux range, okay, now he has, on this coat here, there's probably six layers, but you cannot see a brush stroke. Um, it looks really natural, it's got an absolutely lovely finish, and that's what you want, and that requires patience and thin paint.